Hi hobby friends, today we're painting this bust and maybe learning something a little Spanish too. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video as well because I'll also talk about how you could get some free stuff. So I backed Scale Colors Kickstarter for these new fluorescent paints recently and was pleasantly surprised to receive a free mini bust in my package when it came through. As a subject matter, she's a little out of my comfort zone, but that's a good thing if you ask me. Getting better doesn't happen in the comfort zone. After a slightly inadequate cleanup job and a quick base coat of black, I'm taking my first not usual for me step. No airbrush, no lighting sketch, just straight in with the brush and this red base color on the skin. Don't worry, I'm not envisioning this lady as a cousin to Marvel's Red Skull. I know there are going to be several layers over the top of this, both more natural dark skin tones and more regular light skin tones, but this red is really just there to enrich everything that's going to go over the top. Next up, pro content creator move. Spend an hour laying in those skin tones, but forget to hit record. Very cool. The main paints on the palette there are a strong rich red and Liquitex acrylic gouache peach, which is a pretty perfect starter color for light skin tones if you're in the market for that sort of thing. I'm not going for anything extreme with my lighting here, but we always want a little modulation, so I've chosen this dominant right side sunny light. You'll also notice my skin tones are looking pretty rough. We'll take care of that in just a second. I continue sketching in and adjusting my skin tone for a while here. It's most of the mini, so we have to get it right. When I'm happy with the shape of everything, it's time to deploy that Spanish trick I was talking about. I'm calling it Spanish because all those fantastic painters out there that I see use this technique the most, the Jose da Vinci's, Sergio Vilches, Marc Mascalans, and Sergio Calvo's of the world are all Spanish. It's nothing particularly fancy, but if you're used to using your airbrush as a broad strokes, not so accurate tool, it could be a little counterintuitive. We're going to lay in a glaze, but with the airbrush over our regular brushwork. By using the airbrush, we guarantee a smooth application and it opens up options that are a lot harder with a regular brush, namely tones with a high quantity of white in them. With regular brush glazing, these colors can end up streaky and chalky, not so with the airbrush. You may ask, why not just do it all with the airbrush then and skip the brush stage, and that would be a very valid approach, one I use even, but you can't beat regular brush work for accuracy and, more importantly, liveliness. All those brush strokes really give a sense of motion and interest to the mini, but we want the smoothness too. This technique means we can have our cake and eat it. In my cup, I have a light and importantly, very, very thin skin tone. The hue here is of course variable. For this mini, I know I generally want to lighten up everything on this pass, so a lighter mid-tone is what I'm using. The dilution is not really optional though. You need that very thin glaze-like consistency because just like a regular brush application of a glaze, we're using this to smooth our transitions and borders and tint the overall tone, but we don't want to cover over the previous work completely. Of course, very thin paint comes with its own issues when using the airbrush. All that dreaded spider webbing and flooding and general hard to controlness of the airbrush goes into overdrive. But you know what, you just have to dive in and get to grips with it. The toppest tip that I think some people may have missed with airbrushing accuracy is this. Work in short bursts and keep the airbrush moving. You can see how my finger is bouncing up and down there in little short bursts and generally I'm not sticking around in one spot for too long. If something needs more paint, I let one layer dry and then go in for another layer. I'm also only using probably the first millimeter or less of lateral action on that trigger. That is to say, very little paint is getting out with each puff. Like any skill, this takes quite a bit of playing with to really get down, and all the while you have to stay aware of how much paint is on the surface you're working on, how dry it is, how your angle is working, it's a lot, and guess what? Everyone makes mistakes. 
and then compounds that mistake by trying to blast it away with a jet of air. But with a speedy response and a lot of water, most mistakes are fixable, and anyway, that's how we learn. The enlightening portion of the process is done and the Pirate Queen is looking much, much smoother, but we've been left with a slightly pinkish cast in our shadows where I was really hoping for something a bit warmer and a bit richer. No problem though, because airbrush glazing works just as well or even better with darker tones of course. I have some neat Gilliman's Flesh contrast paint in the airbrush and again, using short controlled bursts, I'm layering that in. Unlike the light pass though, which covered more or less everything of the skin, here I'm concentrating on shooting up into the shadowed areas from below. And the rest is gravy. Lots of old fashioned brush blends between the warm and cool tones on the clothing and bandana, plus some fun freehand patterns sort of following the very light texture that's there, and some quick and dirty non-metallic metals for the buckles, all those sorts of assorted details. While you watch me fiddle with those details, let me talk to you about that potential free stuff I mentioned at the beginning. So, when I placed the order for those scale colour fluorescents, I not only got this bust for free, but they also chucked in one each of their metallic sets, the copper, silver and gold that most painters seem to agree are some of the best true metallic paints out there. However, I already have all three sets, and as good as they are, I'm not likely going to use them all up anytime soon. So, why not run GRG Miniatures' very first giveaway, I thought. Those people you see whizzing across your screen right now are amongst the finest citizens of Earth ever to have lived. Yes, that's right, they are members of the OG crew tier on my Patreon. It's £3 a month and I've promised them they will always get all the benefits of my Patreon campaign, now and forever, and the price won't ever change. And there are still seven places left at the time of making this video. If you've been on the fence about signing up, now is the time because on December 15th I'll draw three random names from the Patreon hat and those lucky members will get one each of the three metallic sets. Nice. Starting from next year I plan on increasing all those benefits too and when the OG crew tier is full, that's it. I'll be opening up other tiers but you'll never get the coveted OG crew badge of honour. Any hoozle, that's the pitch, now back to the paint. With all the details laid in, it's time to whip out one of those effects display painters love using to give a little extra zing to their models, the old rim light. We are due a deep dive on this one sometime soon, and I don't want this video to go on too long, so I'll just say here that I'm doing the slightly cheaty version, finding my main viewing angle, and basically just adding a line of very light blue paint where it's just visible but make sure you sub so you can catch the video on that subject in the future. And here's what she looks like. I'm still snowed under with the house move related stuff and trying to catch up with all my work and commissions, so I'll be honest, I didn't take every aspect of this mini all the way, but as a practice piece for that airbrush glazing technique, I'm happy enough with how she turned out. What do you think? And do you think you'll use that airbrush glazing in the future? Let me know in the down below and I'll catch you folks next time.